Okay, hey everybody, uh, Jim here, Discovery Divers Tokyo, coming at you again from beautiful, beautiful Osazaki. Um, today is going to be just a really quick tour of a second stage regulator. All right, I'm going to show you some of the things uh, that uh, that they do and they can do, the adjustments. Quick few minute overview that uh, a lot of people find find kind of handy. All right, so. Um, first thing, this is a, uh, an XTX uh, 100, actually. Um, doesn't really matter, matter the kind, but what, what I'm gonna focus on here uh, are the, the two adjustments that you'll generally find on a regulator, right? You've got the knob here that we call the cracking pressure, and um, this one is the Venturi adjustment, right? Now, not all regulators will have these adjustments, right? These are usually uh, more expensive regulators will have them. And what you'll notice is, I think, um, for example, uh, XTX20, I think, for Apex, or you know, whatever downline regulator, usually often the cracking pressure is mis missing. Or definitely, I think the XTX40 also, it's the cracking pressure is miss missing, and then you'll only have a Venturi adjustment, right? And then some regulators, you don't have cracking pressure or Venturi adjustment, right? I, I like to have both, okay? And uh, let me give a quick overview here. So, the way to think about it, right? Cracking pressure, uh, adjust how easily air starts to flow in your regulator, all right? And adjusting it outward, lefty-loosey, right, is gonna make air flow the easiest, right, as easy as possible. Then the, the Venturi adjustment, right, you've got a plus position right now, it's in plus position, and then minus position, all right? And some of them have a plus, most have a plus and a minus. Some of them have like a fat to a thin uh, symbol, and the fat is like, more and the thin is like less, right? So plus to minus, right? And what this does is in the, this, <clears throat> so cracking pressure was how easily air starts to flow. And then the Venturi adjustment is how easily air continues to flow, like the momentum of the air, right? So plus the air, once air gets going, it goes, it continues to go easiest. And minus position, once air gets going, it's, it's got some resistance to continue, right? All right. Okay, so let's have a look uh, inside this regulator as I continue to explain. This is a really handy tool, right? It's kind of, when I was young, they had these for jar openers, right? It's kind of a slightly rubberized uh, surface. It's also really handy on, uh, so Apex regulators, they unscrew like this. I'm not sure how other brands do. I know um, uh, Scuba Pro used to have like a pin, maybe some others do as well. I use Apex and Hog, so I know, I know how these work, right? So cap comes off. The, the diaphragm comes off, and this is a diaphragm protector. Uh, sometimes they stick together. I'm not gonna take those apart, because I don't wanna risk breaking. It's not my regulator, actually, all right? Um, so, so st step one, right? Taking, taking this off is actually a nice step. Um, sometimes, I don't know if it happens to you, actually right here, right, the ground here is these perfect little pebbles and they're just the right size to get in a regulator here uh, and often not come out very easily. So you, you shake your regulator around, oh my gosh, I got these rocks and they won't come out, right? If you have a simple tool like this, right, you can get your cap off and do, uh, right, the basic debridement, right? Get the crap out of your reg, right? Okay, so we have a quick look inside. Let me have, let me see if you can see this. I think you can, okay, all right? So what you've got here is a, or is a, a lever, right? It's psh, psh, there's no air, that's my sound, of course. Yeah, I know you knew that, right? So what happens is, when this pushes down, right, the air is gonna come out like that. And the basic idea is, right, on the inside of here, there's a hard surface on that diaphragm, and that covers here. So when, when you breathe in, right, you take an exhale here, you're forming a vacuum inside here, which is pulling the diaphragm towards you, which is pushing on the lever. Right, and it's, it's forcing air into the regulator from your hose, right? And then of course into your mouth, right? Okay, so the cracking pressure, right? Inside here, there's a spring of tension, right? And what you've got, basically speaking, there's a, a seat, right, of rubber. We call it a seat. And then there's a tube that's like a cookie cutter. It's sharp all the way around. And that cookie cutter is pressed against this rubber seat. And when you breathe in, right, and right, that, that lever is pressed, the lever makes the cookie cutter come away from the rubber seat and air can come out. And then you exhale, it closes, right? So when, and there's a, like I said, there's a spring behind this cookie cutter 
how hard it's pushing on the rubber, right? So when we dial this in, right, what we're doing is we're increasing the spring pressure. It's pushing harder on this cookie cutter uh, and, and against the rubber. So it's more difficult for it to move away and for air to come out of here, right? And then the opposite is true. When I loosen this, right it's releasing the spring pressure making it easier on the cookie cutter so the air comes out a little bit easier right with less resistance okay so that's that's what's happening here now i don't know if you could see this but what's happening with the venturi adjustment all right i guess i'll have to use my pinky so uh all right so the air release from this system is kind of toward the top and you might see that there's like a fin and what happens is the air comes up hits the fin and bam directly to your mouth right, when you breathe in. It's a direct shot, right, like a turbo boost directly to your mouth, right? And that's with the Venturi adjustment in the plus position, right? Now, it's probably gonna be hard for you to see, but when I move this to the minus position, right, there's a plastic sleeve that covers that whole shot of air that comes out. So instead of the air coming up and, and off the fin and directly to my mouth, it has to come around this new plastic piece, then to the fin, and then around. So basically, the momentum of the air is uh, diminished, right? And I don't, I have no idea if you, if you could see that at all. I'm gonna assume no, all right? All right, okay, so the takeaway, all right? So generally, uh, the regulator that's in my mouth, right? I will unscrew the cracking pressure all the way. All right, so air is gonna flow as easily as possible. And I'm gonna have the Venturi in the plus position. So I'm getting as much air as I possibly can because I kinda like air, you might as well, all right? Now, uh, my spare regulator, right, that for me, my system I'm having uh, around my neck, I also have these, these two uh, adjustments. Now for my spare regulator, I'm going to turn the cracking pressure in all the way right and I'm gonna turn this to minus because I'm not using it and I don't want it to like free flow around my neck right so if I close the cracking pressure and I turn this to minus the air is least likely to start flowing and continue flowing right um, and then and you could still breathe it right and when you breathe it if you had an air share or, or whatever you put it in your mouth gosh that's not so comfortable right you can you can turn it turn it up change this right and that's what I would encourage people to do right now um, storage I'm just gonna put this back on while I'm talking all right it just screws back on and you can just make it hand tight all right all right now storage right so on my spare right it's often it's it's dialed in right in terms of the cracking pressure um, now what I've heard and it makes it makes sense to me it's not really good to store this with the cracking pressure dialed in all the way right and I'm gonna tell you why and it, and it kind of makes sense so I'm gonna unscrew it I'm gonna make sure the Venturi it doesn't matter how you store it right because it's just a piece of plastic moving like that but the cracking pressure right what's happening is I've got that soft delicious rubber here right and I've got this sharp cookie cutter and which what, what, it's easy to imagine so the more I dial down on the cracking pressure the harder it's pushing on this rubber and you could easily imagine if it's stored pushing against that rubber it might not recover fully in the future right so or in where that cookie cutter was touching that rubber the rubber might go inward as a dimple right and then air would leak out that's that's a leak or possibly a free flow waiting to happen right if uh, if i stored it with right the cookie cutter pushing too hard and it made a permanent indentation and my rubber seat was uh was ruined um what well, just ruined it, it, it was used right used up uh, but it will happen faster if you if you leave it store your regulator with the cracking pressure uh, screwed in uh, so then this rubber seat is one of the items that's changed in a standard service right so over time it's every every seat will get dimpled and they'll put a put a brand new one there right so you'll have uh, They'll also adjust the spring pressure, right? Now on that, another, another function of uh, the spring pressure, right? Uh, there's actually another way to adjust that and that's in from this side, but that's part of a regulator course that we won't talk about now. But uh, if this is all the way out and it's the regulator you're breathing, right? If that's starting to leak just a little bit, right? Uh, and if you really can't get it stopped by like breathing on a bit, maybe getting purged, you know, uh, washing it out a bit. Um, 
you can dial this in a little. And what that's doing is, you know, probably since the regulator was last adjusted, right, with, with the spring all the way in the loosest position, it was an adequate seal on this rubber. Now, it's not, right? So the, the rubber probably has indented and that pressure that used to seal is not sealing anymore. So what you could do, you could slightly increase the pressure in this, right, until it doesn't leak, right? And what that's doing, it's pushing harder on the rubber. Now, if, if that worked, at some point in time, who knows, it might be months, it might be you know, a year, I don't know, at some point, you might be dialed in all the way and it's still leaking. You can't stop it by, by doing that anymore. And in that case, it means this has indeed dented uh, all the way and it's beyond the adjustment ability of, of your, your manual adjustment here. You might still be able to adjust it somewhere else, but we won't talk about that, right? Um, and on your backup regulator, if by accident, you know, you were storing it with uh, the cracking pressure dialed all the way in and it's now leaking, you're kind of in a bit of a difficult situation because probably there's there's no way to get that to stop. There is a cheat, actually. You could maybe unscrew this just a little bit, but I won't talk about that either, all right? Probably it's time to service that regulator, all right? Okay, all right, so I hope that was helpful. You know, you know there are these adjustments and people know usually know what they're called or you heard what it was called in your, uh, your uh, course, but uh, not really knowing how to practically use it. Now you know on your primary and your secondary how you wanna have your cracking pressure and your Venturi set up. Safe diving, enjoy, thanks a lot. Okay, thanks for watching. All right, well, if you like this kind of thing and uh, you think you'd like to see more, uh, I think there's a subscribe button right around here somewhere. And if you are coming to Japan and you'd like to hook up with us and dive, I think right around here there's a spot where you can click, come and have a look at the webpage and see what kind of events are going on. All right, thanks a lot. See you on the beach. Bye.